Hello and welcome to Your Average Bear Gaming. So I've got a question for you. You want to make a kill team, but you want to customize it. You want to make it your own and you have a bunch of bits lying around. What can you do that's quick, easy, and looks really cool? I've got an idea for you. Let's see what you think. Roll it. Okay, so I had a plan, I had it recorded, and I was explaining what I was gonna do. It's gone, I can't find it. So I'm just re-recording a little bit of the introduction, what the plan is for this kit bash. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking a bunch of different kits and I'm blending them together uh, in a kind of a controlled way. So I've got a one box of, uh, so I've got one box of Kill Team, the Death Watch Kill Team, it's a, a box of five uh, that was unopened. I'm going to use that here. Uh, I've also got a half a box of Mark III Space Marine armor. It's from the Horus Heresy line, but it looks pretty cool and it's pretty compatible with modern kits. I also put another kit because I was a little tired of not having the right melee weapons to use for my kill team. And I decided, well, I'm just not going to use the weapons, I'm going to use the models themselves. So, Vanguard Veterans. Though the dudes, the Space Marines that have really elaborate looking armor, uh, they have those big jetpacks, which I'm not going to use in this build. Um, so I've got some leftover jetpacks. Uh, and as I was building this model, so that was the original plan, was to have those three kits. Somewhere along the way, I decided, you know what, I have a group of 10 tactical marines that I can't use because Death Watch cannot use a tactical marine squad. They're all supposed to be veterans of some sort. So I folded that in too. The end result is this huge squad of marines, 25 space marines that are kitted out and ready to join one kill team or the other in my Death Watch army. So that's what this video is about. I'll build a couple, start mixing and matching pieces, um, and I'll show you what I have as a result, as well as pointing out a few of the problems I found along the way. In the next video, I'll do some painting, so if you're interested in that, check it out next week. So, here we go. I hope you enjoy it. There's a minimal amount of complaining. I promise. <clears throat> so I'm working to assemble, so my strategy here is, to get assemble five, uh, five of each from these boxes. Once I have them assembled, I mean, you know, not permanently, just with uh, my good old sticky tack, uh, I can kind of mix and match the parts and also uh, ensure that all the pits, all the parts fit together the way uh, I would like. But I ran into a problem that, while not common, it's very Games Workshop. Um, so, I've got my sergeant. He's the sergeant from the Vanguard Veteran Squad. So I've got his, the two halves of his torso, I've got his legs, and it is time to attach a few arms. But you'll notice here the instruction manual. Well, so the instruction manual says, for instance, here. The arm is 1E and 1B. So 1B being the arm, 1E being the shield. Uh, which is great, except that on the sprue, none of the parts are named 1A or 1B. So, for example, I have four shields. Parts numbers... Uh, probably 44, 44, 45, and 46. Um, sometimes it's a little confusing to associate the number with the part, but eh, we can figure it out, right? So 44, 45, and 46. The numbers 40 anything do not show up here, nor they do show up anywhere on this page. Now, that isn't as big of a problem as the arm, because the arm says it's 1B. Or the one here with the lightning claws, it's 1F. 
that numbering system doesn't exist. What part are they referring to? I can only imagine that they're talking about a subassembly, but they don't say what parts go together. Now, this may not be that big an issue in this part because all of these uh, weapons or uh, arm slash weapon combinations will are typically one-handed. So if they're one-handed, it's not that big of a deal. But it's happened in other kits where the weapon is two-handed and so now if you have a very specific arm and a very specific gun and a very specific torso combination, you need to label those and do so correctly. So I'm at the point here where I have to actually guess which arm is going to go where. And I don't like that because at some point there's going to be, I'm going to reach a point where I'm, where I'm thinking, oh, this should have gone over here. Uh, thankfully, I'm pre-assembling. This is all essentially dry fitting. Um, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. But I've encountered situations like this and it really messes me up. And it, it's not hard. Games Workshop, you know what parts are on your sprue. You know this when you're creating this document. Just, you know, figure it out, man. Figure it out. You're a multi-million, possibly billion dollar company. I don't know, I don't own any Games Workshop stock, although I keep wondering if maybe that's not a bad idea. Um, but, come on guys, just figure it out. All right, I'm gonna do some guessing. Here's my kill team. Well, probably more than one kill team, but it's all the dudes from the. Uh, it's all the dudes from the five man kill team box, the dudes from the Vanguard Veteran Squad, and the uh, Mark III armored Marines. Uh, so. I've just built the Marines. I haven't mixed them and matched them yet. I mean, there's a couple of pieces that I have had to because, you know, some of them had left-handed weapons and I needed a left-handed weapon, etc., etc. For the most part, these are the units as they come in the, in, in the box. Another exception is the backpacks. So, because the Vanguard veterans come with jetpacks, and I'm not interested in equipping my uh, kill teams with jetpacks. Um, I actually had to order five jetpacks. Or not jetpacks, I'm sorry. Uh, the power plants, the backpacks. Because uh, if I don't use the jetpacks, they don't supply an option of jetpacks or power plants. Uh, it's just the jetpacks. So I went on eBay, got, a, uh, got five. Uh, they came in. It was great. Packaged nicely, whatever. Uh, so here's my dilemma. I have 15. It's already, I already have more kill team members than I'm going to use. But I have a lot of bits left over from these three kits combined with the other bits that I have. And I think as long as I'm already doing this insane, insane build, let's make it more crazy, shall we? And I've got just the thing. So I've got this Space Marine Tactical Squad. Uh, I can't use the Tactical Squad in my Death Watch army. It's not one of the options that you can pick. Uh, it's Death Watch, they only take veterans, and so these members of the kill team, they're, they're, they're veterans. Uh, but I got this box when I first started this journey uh, of building this army, and I didn't know that. So I got these, and so they've been in my closet for like... Well, not quite a year, but they've been in there for a while. And I can either, you know, sell them, maybe use them down the line for something else, or, or, I can make this 15 strong project into a 25 strong project. I think there's 10 of them in here. I think there's enough bits, or I think there's enough models to make 10. Uh, but more importantly, I think I have enough bits 
to make sure that these 10 are equipped appropriately. So they can't use just a normal bolter. They have to use kind of the Death Watch bolter and maybe some combination of melee weapons, yada, yada, yada. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to take these guys and I'm going to add complexity to this build. Because um, why not? So, yeah, this should be fun. Uh, and as it turns out, I had uh, ordered uh, some additional missile launchers, again from eBay, um, because I wanted more heavy weapons uh, in my squad. So that's probably one of the things, one of the ways I'll accomplish the, arm, the correct armament, is giving uh, these guys missile launchers. So I'm going to cut these off the sprue. I'm going to build an additional 10 models. And when I'm ready to mix them and match them, I will turn the camera back on so you can see that Mexican magic. It might be fun. It probably will be fun. Let's just go with it's going to be fun. This isn't a lot of models, is it? Nah, it's totally manageable. Okay, so I'm not going to lie. I was worried <clears throat> that this was going to be way too big a project. Total of 25 models. <sighs> As a result of mixing four kits, five, uh, three five-man kits and one ten-man kit. Um, yeah, I was intimidated, and I still am. However, holy cow, this looks awesome. There's a lot of dudes here. I am kind of stoked. So I'm afraid of the sheer amount of models, but I'm also really excited by how cool they look. Um, now, this is them without doing anything to them. Um, so I'm gonna mix and match stuff. So I'm gonna swap some heads, I'm gonna swap some torsos. Uh, the arms, the weapon loadout, I think I'm gonna keep it as it is, because um, I kind of, I, I picked things that I thought would make sense. It's a good mix of ranged, melee, and maybe a couple of mixes in there. The idea here is to have mixed squads, or at least have enough of, you know, every combination that I can come up with a bunch of squads. So if I want like a five-man melee squad, a five-man range squad, or five, a ten-man mixed squad, I can do that. Um, so with a project this large, it's important to understand that it's large so you want to keep it simple right so one would be tempted to give these guys like this guy for example just awesome poses right like ah spread open the arms or do something like that or maybe do some modding but you don't want to mod you don't want to mod 25 models um and honestly just take a look at them they don't really need them the the most basic dudes are going to be things like this. This is the 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 kill team member uh, with the it's this is that heavy the stalker stalker pattern bolt gun or whatever. Um, you could maybe mod this guy a little bit, but eh, why? So I think that if you just mix and match the 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 torsos and the legs. Right, because as with the last project, uh, you really don't want to mix and match like the front and back halves of the torsos. Um, oh, and the backpacks. You can totally mix and match the backpacks. I think that's going to be enough variety. Right, so some of these have very elaborate legs. Some of them have very simple legs. So if you swap them out, um, and honestly, you can kind of just do it at random. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to swap some heads, I'm going to swap some torsos, and I'm going to come up with a cool looking kit. Um, yeah, uh, the only things I'm not going to do too much swapping are like these guys. Well, yeah, so these are missile launchers, so as if you're new to uh, Death Watch, the kill teams can't take a lot of heavy weapons. Um, they can take like the 
they can take kind of the shorter range, like so they can't take las cannons, they can't take plasma guns, they can't take multi melters or melt guns, uh, so they can't do any of that. But they can take missile launchers. So I have four of these guys. I bought uh, from eBay. I bought some of these missile launcher kits. It looks like from a Devastator um, squad or something. And so I've got four missile launchers in here. That should be more than enough combined with my uh, f my frag cannons and. And the other, the heavy bolter thing that Death Watch can take, um, and so I pick the head. So I'll swap out some legs, and that should be about that. Uh, yeah, let's start. Let's start swapping. So I'm just gonna do these things one at a time. I'm taking off the legs. Setting them aside. Alright, so I'm gonna mix them up. Because I'm gonna make this as random as I can just to maximize the variety. Uh, <clears throat> but the only thing, <clears throat> there are a couple of restrictions. So you'll notice that I have some of these legs that are pretty dynamic. So there's, there's dudes running, right? And I'm not sure that I want my heavy weapons dudes running with a missile launcher. Not aiming. I mean, obviously these guys are going to run occasionally, but they're not going to run and shoot a missile launcher. So that's the only combination that I'm going to kind of put the kibosh on. The other, uh, so there is one more. Uh, the, I made a couple of these. These are the, um, oh, the black shields. So Death Watch can take one black shield per uh, squad, uh, whether it's five or 10, right? So uh, I made a couple of these in case I decide I wanna take some black shields. And these, um, they, they only work on some legs. So if the legs are kind of squared up, like if they're basically parallel to the body, it won't really fit with this cape. Um, so I want to make sure that whatever legs I do choose for these guys is going to work. Uh, so something like this dynamic looking like it's running kind of leg, that would look pretty cool on it. Um, so maybe, maybe half, maybe that's how it goes, right? So the, so these hand-to-hand -hand specialists, they get some cool looking legs. Um, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to do that twice, necessarily. Yeah, that looks pretty neat. Yeah, so for those that are, that are holding, you know, kind of cool looking weapons, I'm going to use a rule of cool to determine what to go with. So, this guy, he's a heavy weapons guy, he doesn't need... His, head, his missile launcher makes him cool, not, you know, the pose. Uh, I'll do another one of these kind of squatty looking guys right here. Maybe this guy right there. Yeah, so for these guys, I'm kind of going for legs that have the, the the legs kind of spread out so it looks like they're bracing themselves for firing that's neat i think that's all of the heavy weapons guys maybe i'll look for some sergeants right sergeants should get kind of cool looking legs so there's that guy
think I had another sergeant. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Another sergeant. So these two guys, maybe get some cooler looking legs. Oh, for sure. This is the really elaborate set of legs from the the Vanguard veterans. So he's gonna get something cool. Actually, so if I do this arrangement, if I do this arrangement, uh, this set of legs already has like some cloth element. So I'm going to remove this. This is from, again, from the Vanguard unit for, oh no, this is from the Tactical Marines squad. It's like a, I don't know, a loincloth looking thing. Uh, so this one already has legs with kind of a loincloth looking thing. So. He doesn't need extra loincloth. One loincloth per model, please. Uh, do we have another set of cool looking legs? All right, the rest of them just get whatever. So. Leg swap is complete. The next step is to swap some heads. Uh, now you'll notice that this is a smaller group of Space Marine veterans. Um, and that's because I've removed from this step quite a few models. In fact, all of these guys. And that's because I don't want to swap the heads for these guys. Well, who are these guys? These guys are heavy weapons lads, sergeants, and um, black shields. Those guys, their heads pretty much need to be what they are. Uh, so the black shields, I gave them both the kind of robed heads, so I don't want to swap those out. The missile launcher dudes, I, all, I picked uh, heads that have like optics or something cool happening with the mask uh, to indicate, hey look, these are, these are special, this is special gear. And the sergeants, well, they're bald and I've got a couple of other bald guys, uh, or not bald, helmetless guys, but not many. Um, so if they're sergeants, they're not wearing a helmet, if, uh, because reasons. Yeah. So these guys, their heads are going to stay the same. These guys, we're going to be swapping some heads. We have a nice mix of Mark III armor, uh, whatever mark we have now, the Beaky Marine armor. Um, so, uh, yeah. I'm going to mix these up. I'm going to pop these heads out. And then assign them randomly. Oof, plucking off the heads was kind of weird. I felt like I was some deranged person plucking heads off of insects or something. It was really crazy. But I've got a bunch of heads here in my hand, mixing them up because these are going to be random, as random as I can make it. Yeah, this, uh, this mutton chop guy, I think he ended up with the same head. I remember because I was looking at him before I took off the heads and I thought, you know, I really like the shotgunner with the mutton chop face. Maybe I should keep that one too. No, no, I can't. I won't. I won't ruin the integrity of my random distribution. Uh, well, it was meant to be, apparently. The heads are all swapped out now. And I gotta say, it's really awkward working with uh, kind of moving parts around these models when they're held together with a sticky tack. Uh, things just kind of want to fall apart or slide off, uh, and that's all right. Just you know, be patient as you move these around. It, it's gonna things are gonna wiggle. These are not in their final pose. It's fine. Um, 
if you think it's hard working with them like this, imagine if they were glued together, right? So this next, and I think this is the last step in randomization, uh, is the power plants, the backpacks. Uh, and here I have quite a large group of models uh, that are eligible for a backpack swap. Um, the only ones that are not eligible for this backpack swap are these dudes, because the, their backpacks have missile launchers, and so they're going to keep their missile launcher backpacks. Um, so, just like last time, do some plucking. The nice thing about this is I can even do the, sh the black shields, uh, because they have a standard power plant kind of behind their cloak. So, that's nice. Right, I've got my backpacks, my power plants here. I'm going to mix these up. Now, the really nice thing about these backpacks is that the, the Tactical Marines had a nice variety of of backpacks. Uh, they're all, well, not all of them, but they're like, there's like three or four different types. They're very subtle differences, but they're very different. Now, uh, but they're, you know, they were different enough that um, there's, there's going to be something visually interesting uh, to see. Uh, and this mixing them up is going to help me kind of randomize, um, you know, make sure that the Mark III backpacks go on whoever and you know there's the death watch backpacks tactical marine backpacks the vanguard veteran uh backpacks these all kind of have different homes um it's not that big a deal right who's going to look at what backpack is where and that's kind of not the point the point is to introduce subtle varieties subtle variations uh in the the parts that these guys have to keep them visually interesting so it's not just a, a mob of sameness um, so even if it doesn't really matter you'll know it's different and that's really you know it's really all that matters here's another little, another little randomizing tip when I took these power plants off the models some of them uh, came off with this sticky tack on them. Others did not. And um, I don't want, you know, how clean these came off to influence where they go. So I take off the sticky tack from all of the backpacks. That way I'm not tempted to put them on any um, models that already have sticky, or they don't have sticky tack. Uh, you know, that basically undoes some of the randomness. So I want this to be as close to random as I can get it uh, without, like, assigning a spreadsheet to this and going that way. All right. I'm just kind of kind of go... You know what? One more mix, just because. So we're largely done with our mix and match phase. There is one more phase um, where I'm going to go into the sprues and see if there's any pouches or combat knives, accessories, etc. that I could put on these models to kind of add a little bit more spice to them. Uh, but before I do that, I want to start prepping these for painting. And um, normally for a paint job, you know, I paint most of the pieces separately. Uh, but for a project this size, and obviously we're not going to do any painting in this video, but for a project this size, you really want to manage, you, you're going to want to paint in batches, and you want to manage the the fuss and bother that goes with handling the models and painting and all that kind of good stuff. So one of the first things I'm going to do is figure out what can be glued and what should be a separate sub-assembly. So for a lot of these, for example, this this shotgunner right here. Now his hands look kind of funny because everything is temporarily attached. Um, I don't want to attach 
the arms and weapon because if I do that, I can't get at the chest plate and that's a pretty big part of the Space Marine. But I could probably glue down the legs and the torso. Uh, the head, uh, it kind of, it's kind of a mixed, it's a mixed bag. Sometimes you can glue the heads on, sometimes you're better off not doing it. So I'm gonna not do it. For the most part, the backpacks, you can also glue them on. And if you glue them on now, uh, it kind of helps you solidify the pose you're thinking of for each of these, but also it reduces the amount of things that could fall off in the middle of moving things on and off your um, your painting paddles or whatever uh, instruments you use to help you batch paint. Because that's, at the end of the day, what this is about. We're going to prepare these for batch painting, so the fewer things that could really just tick us off, the better off we'll be. So. <clears throat> I can do that for a lot of these models, so I'll give you a good example. Something like this guy. He's going to be a different case. He's got a cape, so I really can't glue his legs on. If I glue his legs on, I'm not getting to the backside of that cape. right? Backpack is probably fine, although I probably want to not because there's a lot of... Um, recesses in the cape behind the backpack that I want to get at and also kind of behind on, on that on that thing so I won't be able to attach the backpack or even in this case glue the legs on but what I can do is I can glue on the arms I can set the final pose I can glue on the arms because that doesn't interfere with anything in front of the chest so you, you take it on a model by model basis and the idea is to glue as much as you possibly can but no more than that, right? It's a fine line. You'll have to discover where that is. Uh, so I'm going to do that now, and we'll move on to the next step. My mob, oh, Death Watch kill team, guys, is done. They're as good as they're going to be before I start painting. Uh, I even went ahead and glued the shoulder pads because for the most part, you can um, you can work, you can paint them with the shoulder pads in place. Now, if you want to do a really careful job, again, you can paint these separately. But we've got 25 models, and part of batch painting is managing your parts so that as you're painting them separately, uh, you know, a you're going to need uh, an individual little stick that goes on your painting panel. I use little bamboo sticks with sticky tack on either side. And so 25 models times, let's just say, five sub-assemblies. <clears throat> well, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to do the math because arithmetic um, is not my strong suit. And my calculator is not in arm's reach. So the point is, you want to manage how many parts you're handling and how many pieces you could potentially misplace, accidentally swap out, drop, etc., etc. So I've glued as much as I can uh, on the model so that I don't have to worry about that as I'm rushing through the painting process because getting through 25 models is going to be a pain and you're not going to be careful when you're doing 25 models at a time. Um, you could, but would be at this, you know, three months, and I've committed to putting out a video every week, so I'm not going to take, you know, three months to make this many models. I'm going to knock them out as quickly as possible, and it just so happens that maybe you want to knock these out quickly, right? You have uh, a game you want to join next weekend, and you needed a kill team squad, and you need to do them quickly. Uh, you don't have time to, you know, focus on every little detail, uh, you know, highlight every surface, etc., etc. So we're going to paint these quickly. On moss, as, uh, as some would say. In some would be, I guess, just me. Um, so yeah, they've, uh, they've got the shoulder pads. Most of the stuff is glued down. Uh, they're looking kind of cool. I'm liking the way they look, uh, and I'm looking forward to painting these up again quickly, uh, but decently. 
They're going to look good, but they're not going to look amazing. Um, they're going to be tabletop ready, and they're going to look pretty decent. They're going to look better than most of the people you play with, is the hope, anyway. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you picked up a trick or two. Uh, if you enjoyed the contents of this video, or if you just happen to think my voice is soothing, you'd be wrong, but it's your opinion. You're welcome to it. Uh, consider giving me a like and or a subscribe so that other people who are rushing to put together a big old squad of Death Watch can see this video as well. Have a nice afternoon. Be nice to yourselves and each other. Peace. So I've got one bag. Ooh. So I've got one box of.